Hello and welcome. It is Thursday of Free Case Week, which means it's day four of solving free cases. Why do I do these things to myself? I have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> I've had a little bit less time today, so I'm not going to aim for any of these more ambitious ones. Oh, I guess I haven't put in my video link for that one yet. Anyway, um, I am going to go for a quick one, which is I'm going to do Excel Ninja, or actually not this Excel Ninja. I'm going to do this Excel Ninja from 2024 um, because it's short and that fits my schedule today. So, quick introduction. These are uh, cases that were used for a, for a live event at the Global Excel Summit the last two years. This is the first one. Uh, it's called Excel Ninja, just a kind of different format. Um, so, general background. There's a new format for the competition called it Excel Ninja. I think it's based on American Ninja Warrior or something. Um, pre presented with a grid that has 101 columns and 1,001 rows. So, here it is. And... And on out here, um, with uh, with letters and numbers in them. Your goal is to answer a total of 21 questions uh, to reach the finish line within the 10 minute time frame or faster. The questions will be in increasing difficulty as you work. You'll only see one question at a time. So you see right now, uh, and it's not a hard question. Uh, <laughs> right now it asks what, uh, what value is in C35, the first cell in the grid. And then once you answer that and get it right, It'll then ask you the next question and so on across up to 21 questions. And then there's some specific instructions for the last few questions about sequences. A sequence consists of consecutive numbers not separated by letters, e.g. 17215 in cells E35 to T35. So yes, 17215 with letters on either side, that makes sense. Um, or consecutive letters not separated by numbers, e.g. RTLW in D35 to G35. So yes, numbers on either side, but all letters here, fine. Um, a sequence continues from the last cell of a row to the first cell of the next row, e.g. CY35 and C36. So yeah, all the way out here, there's a seven at the end, and then there's a seven at the start of the next one, and there's a letter after that and a letter before that. Okay, that makes sense. There's one other little twist, which at least I know about in advance this time. Uh, when I when I first tried to solve this, I wasted some time, um, because obviously the first thing I would do with a grid like this to work with is name it grid or similar to make it easier to refer to, but there's some worksheet protection here, so you couldn't do that. Now, I found out later uh, <laughs> that there's no password on the worksheet protection. So you can just take it off. But uh, in the spirit of what we were trying to do at the time, I'm going to do a, a hacky workaround for that instead. So let's start the timer and dive on in. Uh, obviously, this format encourages some shortcut taking. So we'll see why 1035. How many cells are in the grid? Equals count A. Uh, and now here, I'm just going to copy this and use pasting as my substitute for a named range, which symbol is located at the very middle of the grid. So it's at 1,001 rows, uh, so 501 and 101 columns. It should be that. What is the sum of the numbers? So I'm going to say sum. Take this one. What is the sum of all the numbers in the grid? Sum of that. Uh, what is the average value of the numbers in the first row of the grid? Average of take of this by one. How many letters F are in the grid? Count ifs. That is that. How many F, M, W, and C? So some count ifs. Uh, that is these. Okay, look for the last letter A in column K. Which symbol is located two cells to the right of it in column M? So we're going to X look up this in what column K? Returning from column M, uh, and I want to search last two first, which is over here. Okay. Uh, what is the count of the letters in the very first row of the grid? Uh, so I guess we can say sum minus minus is text uh, of take blah one. Yes, what is the sum of all the numbers in a 10 by 10 square that has a top left corner located in that cell? Top left corner. Okay, so sum of offset of indirect of this. Uh, zero rows, zero columns, 10, 10. Yes, what is the sum of 100 by 100 square starting at C500? So we'll copy that over and just make that 100 and this 100. Okay, which row has the largest sum of the numbers it contains? So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna say at, sort by, so we're gonna sort the row numbers by uh, the sum 
uh, right. Just make it negative, and then I don't have to do the sort order. Okay, which column contains the largest number of letters? Uh, okay, so we're gonna, I guess, same thing again. We'll at sort by uh, the column headers uh, by minus by call uh, minus minus is text of the grid sum. Yes. Okay. How many letters does the column with the largest number of letters contain? Okay. Uh, so we can just, oh no, I don't want to copy that down. <laughs> I guess then I'll lose my copying of the grid. So max of by call of minus minus is text grid sum. Okay. Which symbol is used most frequently across the grid? Um, so uh, fun little trick here. Uh, turned out that the symbol was uh, a number, and so you could just use mode. Uh, wouldn't have worked if it was a letter, but it's a bit of a cheat. Uh, or we can be a little more proper. We can say at group by to call of the grid and to call of the grid rows zero zero minus two. Uh, so that group by well, let's just don't just geek out too much about the time. Let's just show you what's going on. Uh, we need some space over here. Whoops. That will tell you how many times each thing occurs, and the minus two is saying sort descending on the second column, so you can see how many of each thing there are. Anyway, okay. Uh, all right, question 18. How many times does the most frequently used symbol occur in the grid? Okay, so that can just say max of that same group by to call grid. Oh, whoops, yes. I've already copied it. All right, fine, never mind. Uh, blah, 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 max of all of that. Uh, okay, now I want to go back to having the grid copy thing. So, how many letters are there in the longest sequence on the grid? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to say max of scan of letters. So sorry, start from zero. Minus minus is text grid sum. No, not sum. Lambda a v. So if we have a letter, then a plus one, otherwise zero. Okay, what is the largest sum of numbers that are contained in any given sequence in the grid? Okay, so it's going to be pretty similar. Um, so instead of scanning is text, we're going to scan n, get just the number of values. Uh, and we're going to say lambda a v if v a plus v, otherwise zero. Nope, we don't like that. Uh, that does not look right. Hmm. Really? Uh, if V is greater than zero, that should be the same thing. That makes no sense. What? What am I doing wrong here? Hmm. Very puzzled by that. Okay, let's pull it out here. Oh, what? I'm doing scan, not reduce. So what's the... Oh, do I have to add in plus? Is that a thing? Yes, it is. Ah, didn't know n was one of those functions that was fussy about ranges. Okay, so then let's try n of plus. That works. All right, finally, consider letters a to f to be numbers, or that, what? There we go, in hexadecimal format, a equals 10 equals 11, etc. What is the largest sum of numbers that are contained in any given sequence in the grid? Okay, so it's going to be a lot like this. <laughs> Uh, but I guess it'll be hex to deck, and I know that one does require the plus, and then it'll be if error that zero. I think the other part stays the same. Nope, apparently it doesn't. The largest sum of numbers that are contained in a yeah. Hmm. Okay. I was hoping I would just fly through this, but never mind, never mind. Okay, so we'll find me an A. Oops, sorry. Sorry about this from some color case I was doing. There is an A. Mm, 27. Okay, and that is adding 10, so that's good. 
that's max of 110, so yes, so what's that? Oh, hang on, wait. Ah, uh, you know, it could be the treatment of zeros, it could be the treatment of zeros, so yes. Let's, I could have a zero breaking up a sequence, so let's say instead, if that's an error x, if b that is not equal to x, there we go. All right, so probably what I had was a, a sequence uh, of numbers with a zero and then more numbers, uh, and I was saying stop at zero, but you should not stop at zero, which technically means I was probably lucky I got this one right as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, all good. All right, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.